Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Michaela Gilbert here and we're in Harndorf and today we are visiting the Cedars in Harndorf which is actually the home and studio of Sir Hans Heysen, one of Australia's most well-known artists and I guess the hero of the Adelaide Hills. So I'm here with Mary who's going, we're going to go into Sir Hans Heysen's studio. Mary, can you tell us a little bit about the Cedars and what your role is here? Uh, I am one of a band of about 25, 30 volunteers that take tours, lead people around the property. We come up to the studio and we try and tell people the story of Hans Heysen and his life and his work here. Um, the studio was purpose built by him in 1912 and uh, he lived and worked here for 55 years, producing a huge number of pieces yeah. of artwork. Yeah, his work is absolutely magnificent. Now, there's something special inside the studio that we're going to show people today. But when they come here, how much is it to get into the Cedars? Okay, to do a full tour here with a guide is uh, $15. But you can come any time between our opening hours and do a self-guided uh, tour of the studios. That includes Hans's studio and his daughter Nora's studio. And then you can walk on the, gr on the grounds and round the garden. Yeah, now one of the cool things that I love around the, the property here is that you can lift up these metal oh, yeah. uh, plates which actually have examples of his work right. in situ. And they represent spots he might have been standing at when he painted that particular landscape. So there's about 12 of those scattered on the artist's walk around the property. So it is school holidays, so it is quite a fun activity to do with older children where Absolutely. they can come and see the work and imagine being a famous artist. Uh, standing there drawing around and painting. Yeah, and there's plenty of scope for kids to run freely and, and enjoy the bush and also the landscape that he painted. Yeah, and appreciate some of our own history. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so let's go inside. Show us inside, Mary. Okay. Let's go. I'm so excited. <laughs> let's go. Just to the creak of that door. It's so cool. Wow, look through here, this is beautiful. Yes, yeah, so purpose built to his specifications based on having had four years in Europe studying art. Mm -hmm. um, he knew what he needed and the dominant feature of the studio is actually the window which was put on the south side so he didn't have direct light on him when he was working. Very fussy about light. Yes. Um, he stood with his back to the window and the light would have shafted in over his shoulder with the easels in front of him. Natural light. He didn't yeah. use artificial light. Yeah, wow. Well, there would, and so this is him here. Yes, this is him in the, the studio. studio. Always wore knickerbocker trousers and <laughs> long socks. Long socks. Very trendy. Long, le long leather <laughs> riding boots. Quite distinctive look. Wow. Um, he lived to be 90s and he produced art all through his working life. Wow, would you like to show us through? Go guys, have a look. Come in, come in. In, this, in the studio, a lot of the work is charcoal because charcoal was his favourite medium. But um, in the fireplace area is one of his classic pieces, very early piece, uh, 1908, um, turning point. Because he'd had four years studying in Europe and when he first came back, he painted under the influence of Europe. 1908, he's actually come to live up in Harndorf mm -hmm. and he's captured the Australian light. And that became um, a dominant feature of his work throughout his life, the light and the atmosphere of the landscape. So and very the trees. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Great love of gum trees. He actually was a, an early conservationist. Mm -hmm. um, he had a great passion for gum trees and he was very diligent in preserving them in his life. Yeah, and lots of the ones he painted are still on this property, which Absolutely. is why the garden and the, the property is so beautiful. Now, can we go around here and can you explain what's left on the easel here? Okay, on this easel is an unfinished piece. Unfinished, um, so we can show you technique because he was always with landscape, he did a lot of preparation. He would sketch and draw and um, once he was settled on what he wanted to achieve, the final canvas would come out and he would use a grid system on the, on the sketch piece oh, yeah, and that. then he would block that grid, piece, a grid pattern up onto the blank canvas. Then he works back up in layers um, 
to maintain balance and scale. Ultimately, the grid is obliterated, but the balance and the scale is are Is that maintained. that picture there? That is him working on that wow, piece. Wow, look at that. 1921, approximately. But it, it was never amazing. finished. This never one finished. was never finished because the tree was cut down and he was upset. Oh, really upset. So, so yeah, it was a favourite gum. Um, and it uh, upset him to, to lose it. Yeah, wow. So it is magnificent. So what can people see when they come into his home? The home is fully furnished as it was when Hans and Sally Heisen lived there. Um, so it's full of their uh, bric-a-brac, their artefacts, their, and it's also full of artwork, original yeah. Hans Heisen's. I believe we have over 200 pieces on display here between the studio and the house. So yeah, it is amazing. And there's some great stories of what happened in the dining room and the ballroom and the yeah, garden and yeah. lots of it. I won't ruin it for anyone no, because no, it is an incredible it's... tour. I've always said that the Cedars is probably one of Australia's best kept secrets, but we don't want it to be a secret. No, no, it's a national treasure yeah. and it needs to be out there. Yeah. We welcome visitors. We have uh, three tours a day. And we're open six days a week, so yeah. yeah, we're up for it. A great idea for the school holiday, especially for those older children that have an interest in art and drawing. Yeah. Um, you know, really, really amazing. If you've got visitors coming to stay from interstate, they will be mind blown about that we have this treasure here, right here in Harndorf, right here in the Adelaide Hills. And how many people, put your hand up, who've never been here before, I know it's you, so come along, come and check out the city, support it, every dollar goes back into conserving this amazing place. Um, there's conservation actually going on right now. Oh, absolutely. To All make sure that... Now. now we have the foundation, a lot of work is being done to preserve yeah. and restore and to conserve. Yeah. Now, what are some of the big plans that are gonna happen here? Um, well, as a volunteer, I'm not party to all mm. of them, but um, initially it's to preserve what we have and maintain what we have so that we can have visitors here comfortably. Um, but there are plans for a, um, you know, perhaps a new gallery space mm. somewhere on the, on the property with uh, facilities for exhibitions and uh, maybe even a cafe. Wow. And I heard that Nora and Sir Hans Heysen's work are being shown together in Australia yes. soon. There's a major retrospective in Melbourne next year in March of the father and the daughter. Um, and I believe it's at the NGB in, in wow. Melbourne. That's a big coup as well. It's a very big so, one. So lots of works will be borrowed from here yeah. and private collections. So come and see them closer. Come and see them in their original place. Um, visit Handorf and come and say hello to Mary and all the volunteers that do such a great job here. Thanks guys. See you next time.